everybody, and welcome to another episode of Picture Shows and Petticoats. Tonight we are talking about the third episode of Outlander, and it's me, Elizabeth, here. You can find me on Twitter at Elizabeth Mel, and I blog at ElizabethMichelle.com, and joining me once again is Misty. Hi, Misty. Hi. <laughs> I'm so glad you're joining me. Yep, it, was, it, it was fun last week, and I'm so looking forward to this, and it just keeps getting better each week, I think. It does. This week was also very good, and I looked up at the clock, I was like, we only have ten minutes left? How is that? Uh, it's going to be every week like this that it's just yeah. not long enough for us. I know. <sighs> well. Uh, well, so... Let's just dive right in. There, we got another flashback to to Claire's life with Frank. Um, that was a really, um, I don't know. It surprised me. It surprised me to see that. I just didn't expect for us to go back and and see that sort of thing again. But they're really trying to keep Frank fresh in our minds, you know, so so we don't forget that he's there and she's thinking about him and cares about him and misses him. Yeah, because I think they've got to keep the tie back into her wanting to leave, to go go back to the rocks, to try to go back through. So they have to keep keep that going for now, at least. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> because, you know, if we're not, you know, we're not in her head, so we don't know how she's feeling all the time. I mean, as far as the memories that she's right, she's got running through her mind. Um, so yeah, I actually really like that that scene at the train station too, and um, I don't know. It made me maybe want to see that side of the story as well. So they keep doing this to me, like I want to <laughs> orb about this part of the story. So yeah, because I don't I don't really remember that much detail about in the books about their life leading up to the war and them, them being separated. Yeah. And, you know, so of course they had to stick that line in there, her promising to return to Frank, no matter, no matter what. Yeah. She's coming back. <laughs> uh, okay. So we, then we have this really misleading scene that I think a lot of people were not happy with and whenever I saw the preview I was really worried too. I was like, oh my goodness, this is not okay. <laughs> um, and it's uh, Claire is being dressed by Mrs. Fitz and she starts to tell Mrs. Fitz about her husband and that he hasn't been born yet and she says she has to reveal something to her, and she tells Mrs. Fitz that she's fallen through time. Well, did you... I I automatically assumed that this was just some dream or daydream something or another because there was no way that they could possibly work themselves out of that if, if, if she went ahead and told Mrs. Fitz that she was from the future. Well, way back when, you know, they started running the previews for the show, that clip of her saying, I seem to have fallen through time, mm -hmm. I kept thinking that was she was when she was going to tell Jamie that or something. Mm -hmm. So I kept thinking it was going to be leading to that, and then when we saw the, saw the previews, I was like, wait, this is going horribly wrong here. <laughs> um, well, my thoughts were that maybe they really did change the tone of the show, I mean, they are, you know, taking liberties somewhat, you know, straying a little bit from the books, so I thought maybe they were trying to create some drama, but, well, they obviously did create drama, but not in the yeah. way I was thinking, so, yeah, it was a little worrisome. Yeah, and we get a good idea of, of what would happen if you just went around telling people that you were from the future back then. Yeah, you would. They would think you were, were like a demon, and yeah. um, but luckily, it's all in Claire's head. 
it's not really happening. Um, ugh, but anyway, we uh, we have a lot of activity around the castle because they're all preparing for the gathering. Um, and so Mrs. Fitz is talking to Claire about the fact that all of that's about to happen. All the McKenzie's are going to show up and pledge their loyalty to himself. Mm -hmm. I love that they just call him that and just assume, you know, everybody just knows who himself is. Um, let's call him. I just <laughs> wonder, if other, missed that. I wonder if other clan leaders like get called himself as well. I don't know. I don't know if that's a thing. Yeah, I don't know either. Um, but Mrs. Fitz advises Claire to go ahead and try to get into Colum and Dougal's good graces um, so that maybe they won't think that she's a spy. And um, if she can just handle all the physicking, then, you know, they'll, they'll be grateful for that. Right. Uh, and here we see, we see more of the surgery. We saw it last week. Now we get a really good look. Yeah, I really liked the scene in the surgery where she felt like she was kind of in her element a little bit there. Yeah. Uh, the jars. Oh, that was yeah. actually one of my favorite parts in the book when she's she's reading the labels of everything that's in there and, mm -hmm. and what it gets used for. It's pretty crazy. Um... Yeah, and I'm sure she's thinking, like, well, some of this is useful and some of it is just total bunk. <laughs> yeah, and, like, what all was, I mean, there were some bugs Bug. in there. Ugh. Yeah. Ugh. Who knows? Uh, just, I'm just glad we live in a better time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Where you don't get strapped to a bed and assume that you're full of demons. and Yeah. Well, right. <laughs> um... So, uh, the other thing we see here, and because, you know, here's the thing. If you're ever, like, being watched, if you're held captive and you have guards, just be really boring and don't give them anything to wonder about, and they'll just wander off. Um, right. So, these guys, um, I, I, think it was, I think it was Murtaugh that was watching her at first. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not really sure. I need, to, I need to have pictures of them with names in front of me because they're all dark haired bearded men and that's about as much as I can yeah the podcast I was listening to earlier was kind of having the same problem they were getting confused or like is that Rupert or Myrtle or Angus and I'm like yeah I still don't even know who Angus is I, yeah. I don't know which one he is so um, yeah so they're they're bored with her and hanging out in the kitchen drinking um, so yeah, that'll work. That's that's fine. Um, and up in the kitchen, we see that Column's chambermaid. She she drops something. She's she's distressed about something, and um, Mrs. Fitz tells Claire that that she just lost her son the um, the night before. Lindsay McNeil was his name, mm -hmm. and. He had been, he had been at the ruins at the monastery, which everyone refers to as the Black Kirk, um, which I guess they believe is haunted. I, I, there was a lot of talking going on right there, and I think they may have explained why they believe it's haunted, but I, some of the accent was hard for me to. Yeah, I kind of got lost there as well. <laughs> yeah, um, but anyway, it's it's this old churchyard and. Uh, they believe it's haunted. And we get a, a reference to old Nick. Um, and everyone makes the sign of the cross because they're, they're all, well, Catholic. they're yeah. all very Catholic. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's, um, I don't know. Okay, so I'll, I'll wait until later. But I just got to yeah. say that the priest really freaks me out. Yeah. Yeah. Very mm. creepy. Very. Ugh. Yeah. So 
Claire is called to see Colum. <laughs> yeah, that was a fun scene. Mm hmm. Yeah, it was. Um, I, I didn't, I thought he might hurt that guy who was making his coat. Um, the, the, the tailor makes the coat like a dress. Right. And at first I thought the guy was kind of being nice, like, well, maybe this guy wants to hide his legs, because, but obviously that was not the case. Well, he, I think he doesn't want to, he doesn't want everybody to think that he wants to hide his legs, you know, just walking around, because clearly every time he goes and, you know, holds court or whatever, they put that blanket over his legs. Right. And I thought that was kind of, I mean, that was a normal thing for him. Um... But uh, who knows? He he threw a fit. He did not like it. And, you know, I guess I can see how he might have thought it was disrespectful. But I think that the guy meant well. I don't think he was trying to offend at all. Um, and well, so, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, I also think it's kind of like this is a costume thing. The, the wearing of the wig by the tailor, it kind of threw me off. Like, I don't know, I'm not thinking of like Scottish Highlanders wearing <laughs> wigs. I don't know. It was kind of weird. Yeah, well, now, he was brought in from somewhere, correct? And I wonder yeah, if that... He married into the McKinsey's or something. Okay. Yeah, none of these Highlanders are wearing wigs. No. Um, it'll be interesting whenever the gathering actually happens and they're all cleaned up and, you know, all dressed for the, you know, the big, the big occasion to see yeah. if any wigs do... Uh, up here, um, I mean, we know that the English the English were doing it right then, right? But these are very Scottish people, and maybe they're I don't know. I don't know. I have pictures of some Scottish ancestors that also belong to you, and they were wearing some wigs back then. So oh, all right. Well, that'd be cool to see. <laughs> yeah. Um. So. Yeah, he gets a massage. That's why he wanted Claire there. Is he needed? He needs a massage because that always helped to him to be able to walk. I guess. Right. Um, we get a bare bottom here, so. Yeah, and I kind of forgotten. I guess this part in the book, and so I was like, "What is he wanting her to examine?" I'm confused. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, "Okay, this is much better than what I was thinking it was going to." This is. Not yeah. gonna be so. Uh, well, it was a funny little scene, and I I think it did a lot to. I mean, not everything is you know fixed between them. He doesn't totally trust her, but I think it does show that he does he trusts her to a certain extent to to yeah. bring her up there and to to let her. Uh, you know, tend to his legs in that way. Um, that he trusts her at least in her ability to, you know, do her physicking. Right. Um, so you know, we'll see how how far that goes. But um, and he invites her to to be his guest uh, to listen to the bard in the hall that evening. Mm -hmm. Now. Did you tweet that about people? You didn't think that people would be entertained by that nowadays? Yeah, I was just trying to think of, like, people yeah. would say, like, they would be so bored by that, I think. I think they would be checking their phones. Um, yeah. I, I don't know. I, I'm sure that, you know, back then when it was, like, all that anybody had, I mean... You know, they would they would come around with all the stories from other places, and that would be how you heard about those kind of things. Um, or I mean, even like in like the Jane Austen novels, they just all sit around and listen to someone play the piano for the evening. It's just such a different, yeah, you no, know, time frame. Yeah, it's really different. Well, Dougal refers to her as a feral cat, Claire. Mm -hmm. Right. Which is, that's nice. Um, this scene is probably my favorite of the entire episode. Just everything that happens here and what it leads into. 
it's just great. And I'll probably get the giggles talking about it. Yeah. Um, but this is such high school behavior going on. Um, between Jamie and Claire and Leary. Mm -hmm. You know, Claire is just trying to be a nice person. She knows that Leary likes Jamie. She's like, I can sit over here. I can talk to her about, you know, see see what she thinks about this and, you know, get Jamie to come over and and I can get these two together and get them talking and then, you know, be play little Emma Woodhouse and then walk off and leave and it doesn't work like that. Right. That is not what he's interested in. That's not who. Yeah, I, I he was definitely like the typical high school male there. <laughs> like completely oblivious to what he was saying and who he was offending. <laughs> oh, goodness. Yeah. I mean, well, do you think he was or do you think he was honestly trying to divert her attention? Like, I don't know. I mean, he called her a snot-nosed bairn. Yeah. I mean, not directly like that, but he, you know, he said that he, when he was 16, he had no interest in paying attention to the snot-nosed bairns, which right. was her. Leary back then. Um, I mean, he's probably just, I mean, he's telling the truth, yeah. he was right, but he didn't really, like, his wording totally, you know. Yeah, he's <laughs> probably just an idiot. It's, it's yeah. okay. It's an, well, and before he came to sit down, you know, Claire had that line, men rarely know what's best for them, and she's just decided she's going to show him what is best for him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, oh, my goodness. So she's also got a glass of Rhenish again. Uh, Claire is in her cups, and yeah. she stays there most of this episode. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, making, it's making it easier. She doesn't have to think about you know, everything, but she better be careful because uh, she's going to talk too much. Yeah, she's going to say something like she did the last time and put her foot in her mouth. Um, Jamie's line, this dressing's been chafing me for days. Would you mind taking a look? <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. I... These two together are just fantastic, and I, kn I know this is just the beginning of, you know, we're going to get to see how they work together and everything, so. Yeah, there was a lot of tense, like, good little moments in there that I was just like, ah, I can't wait. <laughs> I know. I was. I was seriously. I was giggling the whole time, and I just. I can't help myself. I can't because when you know everything that's coming, and this is just like, ugh. I don't know. But these are always the best parts of books, anyway. Whenever people are like, um, maybe kind of starting to like each other, but not saying anything about it, and um, <laughs> so we have some more fireside healing. Um, back in the surgery. So, and we, we hear, Jamie explains um, about his scars and that he didn't, that day out in the, in the meadow, he didn't want Alec to see them, even though Alec knows about him um, being beaten. If Alec saw the scars, that's all he'd ever be able to think of whenever he saw him. Right. Um, but he says that he says that it's a personal thing, and I guess he he said he's he's okay with Claire seeing them because I guess the way that she reacts to them, she doesn't she doesn't pity him. She just lets him know that she feels sorry for him without without making him feel pitiful. Right. It was a good scene. Yeah, it was sweet. It was a moment. That's what I wrote down. Moment! Exclamation point. Um, yeah, so that was that was a good one. And then the next morning, she is, you know, out at the crack of dawn to uh, to go meet with Galus to to pick herbs from. A, I guess it's the castle gardens. It didn't seem like she went that far away. Yeah, it had to be something like that. Yeah. 
Um, that's one thing, and I know they can't, they can't cram all this stuff in there, but that was some stuff that was a lot clearer. Like, she spent a lot of time in the castle gardens in the books, mm -hmm. out there, you know, picking herbs and everything. Um, and it's, uh, oh, and I think it's Murtaugh following her again. Yeah. Yeah. And he's, and he, looks, he looks kind of like, where are we going? Why am I following you still? And he hasn't even finished digesting his breakfast. He's bothered right. by this. Yes. Um, I think I think he's maybe my favorite of all of them. Yeah. Um, of all of her, you know, whatever they are, guards. So it's down there that she finds out about this exorcism that's going to happen. Right. And it's Mrs. Fitz's nephew, correct? Thomas? Thomas, yeah, because he was with the other kid at the same time. Mm hmm The one who who died and Right. Uh, we get some kind of creepy um foreshadowing things here with Galus. That just seems to be that's the that's the purpose she's serving right yes. now. Uh, and this girl can do like a crazy look, like like this knowing weird. I don't know. Um, and she says she says she believes that there are powers beyond what it, anything that they can know, beyond what they can see or hear or touch. And then she asks Claire with this like weird glint in her eye, "Have you ever found yourself in a situation with no earthly explanation?" Like, Claire's like, why is this girl asking me these questions? And what does she know? And why is she looking at me this way? Yeah. It's just hard to say much more about I that. Know. I know. I know. But I feel like they're, they're like, spoon-feeding it, you know. And, well, they want, they, they, they're, they're, they're trying to make her as you know, as mysterious as possible, and just, I mean, I think you could know nothing about this, and be watching this, and think that there's, there's something up with Galus, there's, it's not all, she's not right in the head, yeah, of, something's, yeah, something's, something's not, right. yeah, yeah, so, Claire, because she's a modern woman who can't handle somebody being done wrong, has to head down into town, <laughs> to check on Thomas, to stick to stick her oar in where it doesn't need to be. Well, I think also maybe because she also knows it's Mrs. Fitz's That's true. Yeah, like relative that maybe she can help kind of thing. Yeah. Um so we see this kid is totally strapped to the bed. He's, you know, delirious and uh everybody in there I just can't imagine what it would have been like to live in a time where you honestly thought someone who was that sick that it was that it was an illness that it was demon possession. Yeah, I just it boggles my mind, but you know. Uh, yeah, it's well. I think then now. Oh wait, did I skip something? I can't remember if if Galus already said that about the priest about the way he preaches and that he thinks that all women are temptresses and that they need to be beaten daily. I can't remember if, if she said that yet or not, if it may be in the later scene. But either way, knowing that, you kind of know. Because in areas like that, I have a feeling that a one single priest probably had a lot a lot of authority and um, the way he thought, whether or not it was what came down from on high, you know, whatever he thought probably, you know, reached a long way throughout this small community. So, um, and he's scary. He reminds me of like one of those, I don't know if you've ever watched Vikings, but he looks like one of those guys. They have some priests. Um, the Vikings go every once in a while up to, I think it's Valhalla. Is 
something, or I can't remember exactly where the place is. But anyway, they go to this place, they make human sacrifices, and they have these priests there. And they are these scary looking priests, and this guy looks like he's just been pulled right out of there. <laughs> like, he just looks exactly like them. I don't like him. Well, and I think part of it is that, yeah, like you said, he is the authority, and you know, you just have to mention God, and nobody's going to challenge that, because the last thing you want to be is you know, yeah, burned at the stake or whatever. <sighs> so, yeah, and he's no—he's no fan of Claire. And well, yeah, the woman, and then supposedly a healer. Oh man, mm -hmm. that was dangerous back then. Um, so then we are back. We're back at the castle, and Claire sees Jamie. Kissing Leary. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this girl. And I feel so bad because, uh, Jamie, stop toying around with this young girl's feelings. Yeah, it's like, yeah, definitely a classic <laughs> high school boy syndrome there. So. Now, how old is he again right here? I think he's like in his early 20s, like 22, 24. And I think. Claire is a couple of years older. Yeah, I think. So, I think. yeah, he's definitely acting a lot, not get the immature side thing going at the moment. <laughs> oh, goodness, boys. Um, Raging hormones. <laughs> <laughs> now, then they sit down at the table, and, oh, she is just... To tossing barbs his direction about this. About dangerous fillies and, you know, this is all veiled you know, stuff that she thinks no one else is getting. Just just Jamie. But right. other people know, Claire. And uh, once again, yes, I think it was Murtaugh. <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, I, I thought this was really... This makes me want to like dig out the book and go through and see if this actually happened there because I don't remember this and it's just so it was a lot to say to someone when you don't really know that person. Murtaugh said, well, you know, Claire said something about, you know, if Jamie's not careful, you know, he's going to end up with a wife. And Murtaugh says that's not the wife he should have. Right. What are you insinuating here? And he says that Jamie needs a woman, and Leary will be a girl until she's 50. And you know that just as well as I do, Claire. So, okay. I think, I feel like part of that might have been in the book. Like the whole Leary will be a child until she's 50 or whatever. Yeah. I, I don't know. I would have to do the same thing. I don't remember exactly what was said in the book, but it sounds familiar. I just thought that was a lot to say to her. Not, I mean, I don't know. It just doesn't seem like something you say to someone when you don't, like, trust them implicitly. I don't know. Um, well, yeah, someone who's only been there for a couple weeks, and, yeah. you know, yeah, I agree. Mm. Well... Claire leaves and walks outside, and she's tearful because she realizes that she's she's jealous, and she says she's not jealous of the two of them together. She's just jealous of the intimacy. Right. She misses her husband. Keep reminding us of that because if you don't, we're going to forget. <laughs> she has a husband. <laughs> Uh, well, and we missed talking about the footsies under the table, too. Oh, I totally forgot about the footsies. Ah, the footsies. Yeah, that was like, whoa. <laughs> there were footsies under the table. Okay, maybe that's the best. Yeah, that was really great. And I think that was part of the intimacy, too. I think she was just like we got this having fun and then realizing that, you know, it's not real or... It can't be real for her. Yeah. Well, and the other, I mean, on the intimacy thing, nobody's touching her other than Mrs. Fitz helping her right. get dressed. You know, you have all this 
you know, stranger in a strange land thing with her just completely being a foreigner. And then also, I mean, just, I mean, she can't even hug anybody if she wants. Well, Mrs. Fitz would hug her. I have yeah. no doubt Mrs. Fitz would hug her if she needed a hug. But, um, yeah. Yeah, but none of the, I mean, other than her moment trying to befriend Leary and then working with Gellis or is just not yeah she's not she doesn't have that girlfriend connection that is not happening no uh, and why is it, while she's outside just being miserable Dougal sees her and offers to take her into town the next day to see Gellis and uh, to get restocked in the surgery before the gathering Mm -hmm. Um. Th okay. So, I'm just gonna say this to you. Okay, and everybody who's listening, of course. But <laughs> is this is Galus's attic, right? Yeah. Is that where we were? Some sort of attic, alcove-looking thing. Yeah. It's like her little. It's her place, though. Like yeah. it's her. It's her, it's, that's, that's Galus's place. Yeah. Um, uh, so, <laughs> which is, mm, Galus, there's so much going on here. Um, well, I'm still trying to figure out, and I'm trying to remember exactly what her, not occupation necessarily, was she kind of a healer too, or she was she just more like a herbalist kind of thing? Well, you know she's she's got this husband, yeah, who is what the magistrate or something, something like that. Well, and I think that I don't know that she actually like. I guess she just like knew some things or something, and she just kind of did these things because uh, she kind of had some influence because of who her husband was. Right. Um. Anyway. I, and I don't know, I mean, because I don't remember if it's secret. I mean, did it, it does it seem like it's a secret? Because she says that about, um, I think in the first or second episode, you know, that the girls come to her for things. Um, and I didn't know if it was kind of an, you know. I don't know if it's necessarily a secret, because I'm, I'm sure more, I mean, if the girls are coming to her for things, all the ladies know. Right. And their daughters too. Uh, yeah. yeah, I don't think it's necessarily like secret. And obviously, he, the husband comes in, you know, with the upset stomach and wants her to give give something to him um, to relieve that. So mm -hmm. I, I bet she does minor, you know, medical relief. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's costive and flatulent. Ugh. That was something else. He was, uh, yeah, I don't remember him being that. I don't remember it being, like, <laughs> explicit. In yeah. The show. <laughs> but this leaves nothing to the imagination. Um, and uh, he comes up there, and he's about to have to deal with a, a situation. Um, mm -hmm. uh, a boy has stolen two bannocks, which is, what is that, like... <laughs> Like red. red? Yeah. yeah. And Galas uses her wiles to get his sentence reduced because he was going to have to have his hand chopped off. Yeah. That's really rough. And you know what? You would need a healer nearby if that was the way that you were handing out justice. Yeah. I mean, you can't just chop off someone's hand and... Well... I bet they probably did. They just chopped it off and Well yeah, and then you just like stick it, it in the fire, right? Don't you just like like right. Oh oh my goodness. That hurts just to think about. Um so good for this boy. All he's gonna get is a nail in the ear. <laughs> well and that's it and that's the other thing that's crazy. Like he's a boy. It's not like he's like a thirty year old man stealing Bread. It's like uh, I bet if you were a man, you would just get killed. There would be no question about it. You'd just get killed. 
Yeah, they would have like shot him on the side or something. Yeah. But then, how is? I guess maybe it's because it's clan activity. Whenever they, you know, because they they're always stealing each other's cattle, right. all the time. But they probably think that's like territorial and an act of war or something. Yeah, kind of game-like, probably, too. Yeah, probably, because they're all boys, and they're just <laughs> messing yeah. around. Now, here we have more interesting questions from Galus. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> she's like, Claire, tell me more about where you're from. It seems so different from the Highlands. Yeah. Like, do you guys really do things that differently in Oxfordshire? It's not really that far away, and it's... <sighs> Until 1743. Mm-hmm. So she wants to know all of this stuff, and uh, about that time, Jamie walks in, and Galus is like, hey, Jamie, Claire's about to tell me all about where she's from. Um, then, you know, they manage to get out of that somehow. There's a lot of looks exchanged. Um, uh, and I don't remember exactly how but they end up back outside. Um, yeah, I think Jamie just said, no, we really got to go. I've got to take her back. And okay. He just, he, yeah, I don't think he was interested in being there, and he just kind of thought it was like one chore he had to do, I guess. Yeah. Well, they get outside. The boy still, he, he hasn't moved because he has to tear his ear free before he can leave. Yeah, that's... Oh, that's so bad. Uh, so, but they, uh, they concoct a little plan together. Um, Claire says, you know, you've got strong hands, right? You can, you can pull out that nail. Um, she goes over to the other side, faints, um, and he manages to get the nail out of there so that boy can run off. Yeah. In the podcast I listened to this morning, uh -huh. they acted like she fainted, like it was like, like a distraction, like a fake faint. I didn't really pay that much attention. Did you happen to see? Uh, it was definitely fake. Yeah, she okay. she was like watching to make sure to see what he was doing, and then she just kind of threw her hand up to her head, and yeah. Okay. Um, you have to really commit to that to <laughs> to do a a solid, you know fake, faint, you know, really fall on the ground. Right. Um, so, yay for them. They get the boy free. And then Claire decides that she wants to go take a look at the Black Kirk. Mm -hmm. Um, and so Jamie takes her there. We get a lot of the history about um, why the boys go there. They're, they're proving that they're men, you know walking around with the demons and the ghosts and whatnot. And I guess that some of them would eat, would eat things there, some of the stuff that was growing. Um, yeah, because they're probably playing out there all day long, so. Yeah. And one of the things that they would eat was wood garlic, and she asks Jamie to show her this wood garlic, and they look at the wood garlic, and it's not wood garlic, it's lily of the valley. If you're a Breaking Bad fan... Yeah. There's something for you. <laughs> um, so then she knows this boy, This if the, if he's eaten this, you know, the, the likelihood is that, that he's been poisoned by it. And so because she knows so much stuff, she knows what she needs to, to heal him. Um, and I guess the, uh, the remedy there is belladonna, which is a poison by itself, oh, I think. Yeah. I thought that was funny. I was like, wow. Yeah. Um, so she goes there, insists on, you know, on being seen. And Mrs. Fitz, there's a, you know, standoff there with the with the priest. And um, was it a pitchfork or a broom? There was <laughs> there was something there. She was holding something. I don't remember. Um, Probably a broom. I can't imagine a pitchfork. I don't know. Um but Claire, you know, she gets to she gets to administer uh, the medicine, and luckily cures him. Um, 
dismay of the priest who thinks he's <laughs> the devil or something. Yeah. Uh, once again, this guy's this guy's bad news. This is just not gonna. Ugh, scary man. So, Mrs. Fitz is very impressed. What is she calling her now? She's giving Claire some name. I don't remember what it was. I don't either. But basically, she's like the miracle worker or something like that. Um, so we have another night with the bard. And this is the last scene of the episode, right? Uh, yes, yes. Yeah. Um, she comes in. Jamie, Jamie finds her. I love this. I love that they're friends now. That they're just like hanging out. And... Um, and you would really need somebody to explain everything that this guy is saying. Otherwise, I don't know how you could enjoy it. Um, so Jamie is telling her, giving her the translation of what the bard is singing about. And it's basically Claire's story. Right. It's a folk tale about uh, a woman who who fell through the stones and wailed and wailed and... Uh, anyway, but she ends up being able to go back to where she came from. And so this gives Claire the just the boost that she needs. Um, well, you see her face just, like, light up, and, like, her eyes are twinkling, like, she's like, well, A, that there's a song that's about me, and B, that they went back, like, it's possible. Yeah, so she has some hope now, and I you, now we're we're just kind of left there. Uh, I just you know, not sure what she's gonna do. Yeah, but we have the gathering coming up, which is going to bring a lot of people uh, into into the the castle there. Yeah. So. That's exciting. And it looks like next week is pretty action packed. Yes. Yes. Um Yay. And I have a feeling it's gonna end on a cliffhanger kind of thing again. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think you're right. I'm okay, I gotta ask you, without giving away any stuff. Alright. I haven't sat down to like calculate it. Um I'm curious about, because, you know, we're just getting eight right now and then eight episodes later. Right. I'm curious about where we'll be left on this after, you know, when eight episodes are over. Yeah. And I'm dying to know. Oh, I'm thinking it's going to be... <laughs> I'm not going to say, but... <sighs> yeah. I'm definitely wondering to know, but I think it's going to be where there's a kind of a big event. Mm -hmm. We find out some big information. There's so many big things coming. I know, and I'm ah! so and everybody listening is like, "What are you talking about? What are you guys talking about? Read the book. <sighs> That's what you need to do." Because that would make it. That would make it like, I don't know, definitely. <laughs> oh my goodness. I can't believe we only get eight episodes now and eight later. I'm going to die. I, I need so much more of this. Um, and now I really want to go back and read the first book again, even though I haven't made, I haven't made any more progress in the second. Um, hmm. So. Are the, is the other eight in January or? I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm too distraught to even. <laughs> <laughs> think about it. I don't know. I know that they're taking a break, that they, they split it up so that the people could have some sort of a break, the cast and crew. Yeah. And I don't know if it was for holidays or what. I know they had to take quite a bit of time off just for the, the promo stuff over here mm -hmm. um, in early August. So, <sighs> goodness gracious. Yeah, it was a good episode. It was uh, good. There was some other costume stuff. There was a lot of nice knitwear that she was wearing. <laughs> I was like, oh, Are you had a yeah, like, like she had like some shrug thing on at one point. And a, and like a cowl. Yeah. And, 
some really cool things that I was like, oh, I'm sure someone out there is coming up with a pattern, but I don't oh, know. Oh, yeah. Cool. I'm sure they are. How cool is that? I, I thought it was, I and it surprised me, like, it, it's not that it stuck out as, like, something that wouldn't be worn, but I just wasn't expecting right. that. Right. Um, but, yeah, girls got to stay warm. Yes, it's October it in Scotland. and cold and rainy there, so. Uh, she's got, like, 12 more layers on than she did the first episode. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I guess that's it for this week, and I maybe we'll see you next week, Missy. Yes, I don't know. It just depends on. I kind of hope not. Honestly, I mean, like I love talking to you, but <laughs> well, I maybe hope... maybe we can. Uh, I don't know. Delay it a week or two, and yeah. Maybe sleeping one day and I can get away for an hour. <laughs> yeah, I just really hope that you've had a baby by this time, like, next week. Me too. <laughs> that would be good. Yes. Oh, all right. Well, thank you all for listening. You can find us on Twitter at PS Petticoats. You can find us on Facebook and on YouTube where you're probably listening to this. And uh, I guess we'll just see you all next week. Sounds good. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. We will go. We will go, I and you. And away in the woods, we will scatter the dew. And the salmon behold. And the ozel too My love We will hear I and you We will hear The calling afar Of the doe And the deer And the birds In the branches Will cry for us clear And the cuckoo unseen In his festival mood And death, oh my fair one Will never come near In the bosom of far off The fray Wood. In the bosom afar of the fragrant wood.